Hi guys, welcome back to my channel Automation Era. Today we are going to discuss about what is Global Exception Handler. UiPath's answer to the question what if there is something that is not handled by my UiPath workflow? What if there is something that is not recognizable uh, by the automation project? So how to handle those situations? So that's the whole idea about Global Exception Handler that it lets you define a business logic or flow logic to the situations where you have not been able to handle those exceptions or there is some unidentified issue that has popped up so so what should your automation workflow should do in order to you know uh, seamlessly get to a closure or gracefully come out of it so i'm going to show you how it is done a very simple example so it's a very simple activity I have used. I'm just opening the Google's homepage, right? And I'm trying to find an icon. So here, just to demonstrate how this exception handler works, I'm going to induce an exception forcefully so that, you know, you can see what is happening behind the scenes. Uh, so here I'm going to find an element which is not there on the Google page for now, right? So if I'm opening Google's page and if I'm trying to find an element which is not there, definitely it will throw an exception. So here, if you see, there is no exception handling, no try catch, no other retries, nothing is there. So I'm also going to talk about in the later part of this video, what is the difference between a try catch and a global exception handler, when to use what and where to use what. So that, that will be covered. So for now, it's a very blunt automation sequence where you are opening a Google page and you are finding an element which is not available. This is a global handler. So just quickly walking you through, there is some logging of error message, error info and all these things. So in this, if you, somebody is not aware how to create a global exception handler, it's very simple. If you go to new and you will see this icon global handler. All you have to do is click it and just give it a name. Maybe, maybe test two, right? So it creates and automatically creates a framework for you for which you can add your business logic. So see how UiPath is actually, you know, uh, making sure that you don't have to code or don't have to put a lot of efforts uh, to make something work. They are giving you a framework on which you can just go and add your flow logic or a business logic. So similarly, uh, this has been created. Please note that these are two arguments within this global handler, which should never be removed or overridden. So there's one thing which is known as error info, which is basically the information about your faulted activity. So for example, if this activity is being faulted, it's entire information, what is that activity name, how many retries it has done. So all this information is passed inside this global handler using this error info argument, right? So see if it's an indirection. And there is one more argument which is called result. It's basically an out argument. Results actually holds what action you are going to perform when this global handler is invoked. Do you want to retry or do you want to abort or do you want to continue with your workflow that is being handled by a result. So it's basically a response back to your main workflow as to what it should do. So these two arguments are very important guys and you should never, you know, delete or override them in any case. So that's a must not do from a UI path, uh, you know, standards. So let me quickly tell you what I'm doing here. I am going, I have created a variable called retry count, right? And I'm going to um, give it a initialization value. So error info, like right here. So error info gives you a method called retry count, which is basically number of times your faulted activity has been retried, right? So if I'm assigning this error info dot retry count to this variable, it will initialize it and it will initialize it to probably zero. Yeah, zero is the starting count. And uh, from there you can, you know, move it, uh, take it further. Next one, 
is failed activity. So failed activities, if you can see, I'm just giving what is my faulted activity name, error info dot activity info dot name. So these are pre-built UiPath functions and methods, which you all you have to do is, you know, just invoke them and they will do the rest. <clears throat> Moving on, so I'm just doing a small if condition asking, okay, let's, I. So I want my retry mechanism to run for three times. I, if I'm failing for more than three times, I have to stop that workflow. So that's the idea behind this. So I'm just simply, I'm going to retry and I'm going to see if my count is less than three. That means if I have retried this particular activity for three times, I should not be retrying it again. So see, so I, all I have done, if my retry count is less than three, I'm just giving a message box just to showcase that how many times it is retrying and I'm passing to result error action dot retry. So error action again is a pre-built, um, you know, method of UI path and retry is again an argument to it. So this will actually tell my main workflow that I want to retry it again. So this is basically an out argument, which I showed you earlier. So using error action dot retry i can tell my calling workflow that you have to retry it again okay so that is how this thing works and on the other side if i am going more than three times i am saying okay boss i am I have maxed out so i have to abort this process and i am just using a simple terminate workflow you can use one more method which is known as error action dot abort these both do the same thing, but I'm just using terminate workflow to make it simpler, right? So let me quickly show you what's going to happen, right? In this, uh, so I'm trying, I'll open a Google page and I'm trying, I'll be trying to find out an element which is not available. So just me quickly run, run you through it. So it's opening a window. It's trying to find an element. It didn't find that element, so it's retrying for the first time. The starting value is always zero. So again, it will be to start again, try to find that element. See that it failed again for the second time. Again, it will do the same thing. So here I have retried it for three times. So next time it comes, it will be maxed out. Maximum retries reach aborting process. Okay, so basically this is a runtime error. You can ignore it It's basically telling you that hey, I retried it for three times. I couldn't find it. So, you know Just have a look what needs to be done So this is how you can define your global exception handler. So this is a very basic example You can you know include a business logic to it. Let's say if your um, automation case requires you to do some specific steps in case of an exception that is not handled you can include here very well right so you can just see if it's not instead of putting these message boxes and all those things you can put your business logic so that's how that's the basic idea of global exception handler it's a very handy thing to work with so now the question can come okay uh, aditya if uh, you know I also have a try catch and I am also having a global handler. What is the difference between the two? So good question. So let's say if you are invoking a try catch here and you're in encapsulating your activity within a try catch, there can be a scenario if you are working with specific type of exceptions. For example, for the people who have, you know, worked a lot with the different type of exception handlings, they will know UI path has selection not found selector not found exception or uh, you know image not found exception all these different kind of exceptions are available so if i have a global handler as well as a try catch in place so the global handler will be you know second in precedence first will always be your try and catch if there is anything that your catch module cannot handle that is when your global handler will come in so the basic funda or the basic difference is uh, between global handler and try catch is that something which is not handled by your workflow it could be without a try catch it could be with a try catch and you know it's not able to catch it 
so your global handler will be invoked and whatever you have written here will be processed right so it's not just retrying they have three more probably uh, kind of uh, you know attributes to it you can either continue continue will actually you know move your uh, process uh, to the next step you will continue from the next activity there is something called ignore ignore is basically ignoring this error and probably you know you continue with the next activity as well and there's one more i believe about about basically stops everything and you know stops your entire workflow um, i'm sorry so it stops your workflow altogether using about so this was the main idea guys and you know um, exception handling is a very important part be it any development tool or any development language so uipath has always tried its best to come up with you know innovative solutions to make your automation seamless uh, you know coming out of exceptions gracefully so these are all the tips and tricks you can try in your automation business case so guys that was the content from my side i hope you learned something and i hope you will like and subscribe my channel so again just to mention if there is anything in your day-to-day work like you want to automate and you don't know how to do it please comment please tell me i would be happy to showcase how to do it with uipath and it's trust me guys uipath is super 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 easy because it works on the idea of no coding so it's very simple and you know uipath has recently launched a uipath studio x which is basically with a vision called a robot for every human and it helps uh, mostly uh, people who are from non-coding background to automate their day-to-day -day jobs so it comes with a very cool ui you can definitely go out and check with the you know on the uipath uh, community or uipath website i'll also post a link uh, to a uipath studio x where you can go and you can you know install it and start playing around with it get rid of your day-to-day -day jobs so thank you so much guys again uh, i really appreciate uh, you watching this video and learning something out of it uh, a big shout to all of you again and do let me know if there is anything i can assist you with in this automation ui path so happy automation once again and take care guys